Easy and delicious. Pickled curry cauliflower medley. That's a tongue twister. Hi everyone. Today I'm doing something a little different with vegetables. Pickling them. The method I'm using here is very easy and it's been used by humans for thousands of years to preserve produce. Way before refrigeration was invented. The process is more specifically called lacto-fermentation, which produces healthy probiotics that's good for the digestive system. The bacteria that goes to work during the fermentation process is called lactobacillus, and it's considered a probiotic that is good for digestive health. It all sounds very sophisticated, but it's actually very simple. Let me show you how to do it. To get started, you'll need a large glass jar. I use a wide mouth mason jar. It's easy to get my hand into it and I like to use glass rather than plastic whenever I can. This mason jar is 64 ounces. Next you'll need some vegetables that you want to pickle along with the cauliflower. Or you can make this recipe with just cauliflower. Cauliflower is the star of this particular recipe. The vegetables play a supporting role. I usually pair carrots with cauliflower and then I use other vegetables that I might have on hand. For this recipe I use a combination of sweet bell peppers, turnip and celery. You'll find out what you or your family likes very quickly. But let's move on to the recipe. So here we have the vegetables. Now for the spices. I use this pickling spice blend that I found on Amazon. It has an amazing smell and you can see pieces of chili pepper and bay leaves in the blend, as well as dill seeds, coriander, and mustard seeds. I also sometimes use this pickling spice. This I picked up in the local supermarket. It also has a great smell and it works fine too. But for this recipe you need some kind of pickling spice, either from Amazon or from the local supermarket, since we are making pickled cauliflower. To the pickling spice I add curry powder, that's what makes this pickled curry cauliflower. This blend has mustard, turmeric, coriander, cumin, ginger, and salt. And then I add this seasoning. It's a tandoori masala seasoning, and it contains paprika, cumin, coriander, garlic, ginger, and cardamom. You might notice some redundancy in some of the ingredients, but these spices add a lot of flavor. Feel free to add your own spices or delete some. Your vegetables will still ferment in the brine solution, but for that pickled flavor you will need the pickling spice, and for the extra flavor use the ones I use, or experiment with your own variations. There's really no wrong way to do this. To make the fermentation happen, you will need to mix a brine solution for the vegetables to bathe in. I use pink Himalayan salt for this. You can use any sea salt that is not iodized. The iodine in the salt might inhibit the fermentation process. Some people like to use Celtic sea salt. It's your choice and you will need water, of course. Use non-chlorinated water since the chlorine can also inhibit the fermentation process. I'll need four cups of water to cover the vegetables in this mason jar, so I'll need to use two tablespoons of sea salt to four cups of water. Measure out four cups of water. Then add two tablespoons of sea salt. One, two. Now I'm ready to add my spices. You can do this any way you like. Some people add the spices to the vegetables in the jar first and then pour the water over it. This time I added my spices to the salt water and then added the vegetables to the brine solution. It doesn't matter which order you do this, it's not like baking a cake. As long as the ingredients get into the jar and the vegetables are submerged under the brine at the end, that's what counts. The vegetables must stay submerged throughout the fermentation process. That is the most important rule that can't be broken. More about that in a bit. So I mixed up one tablespoon of curry powder, two tablespoons of pickling spice, and one teaspoon of the tandoori masala. All this goes into the salt water, which I mixed together. Next it's time to clean and cut up our vegetables into bite-sized pieces. The cauliflower, the carrots, and some garlic. Actually, lots of garlic. This is all going into the jar. Then I have another jar. 
again with cauliflower, carrots, and garlic, but also green and red peppers and some turnip. So here you see me adding the cauliflower and vegetables to the salt solution, but it usually is done the other way around, as you see here where I'm pouring a salt solution over the veggies. As I said before, it really doesn't matter as long as in the end the veggies are covered with the brine. Once the vegetables are packed into the jar with the brine solution, we're almost done. But before we can leave the jars to ferment, we need to make sure that the vegetables stay submerged under the water. This can be done using several methods. Use whichever method works for you. One method I use is the plastic baggie method. Fill a Ziploc bag with water, Ziploc it and wedge it into the jar to act as a weight. You can also fill the bag with marbles if you have them. Another method is to use a cabbage leaf or grape leaf and lay it on top of the water. They also sell glass weights that you can buy for this purpose or get a rock, sanitize it by cleaning it and boiling it in water and that would work too. Get creative, it doesn't matter as long as the veggies stay under the salt water solution, that's all that matters. Here you can see my two jars weighed down with plastic baggies inside and then they were closed with the lids not too tight, just finger tight. It should be loose enough to allow carbon dioxide to escape. If you tighten the lids too much, you might have an explosion of carbon dioxide when you unscrew the lids. So keep the lids loose and every day unscrew to burp the jars if necessary. I keep my lids loose enough that the carbon dioxide gases are able to escape mostly, but I unscrew the lids every once in a while just to be sure. Did I mention you should put the jars in a dark place while they're fermenting? I have them on the kitchen counter covered with a towel to block out the light. And here it is the next day. These have been sitting in these jars for about 30 hours. I have them sitting in a glass tray to catch any water that may bubble up from the jars. The carbon dioxide is constantly escaping and as it does, the brine can bubble up and spill out as well. So having a catch tray underneath is a good idea. Now it's four days later and you can see the water is starting to turn cloudy. If you look closely, you can see the bubbles making their way up. That's the CO2 escaping. You can taste the veggies at this point and decide if they're ready to go in the refrigerator or if you want to leave them a little longer for more flavor. It's up to your personal taste preference. I usually let the cauliflower and carrots ferment for about a week. They stay crunchy, but the flavor gets more intense when I leave them a little longer. Now it's a week since I've set these up and they're ready for a taste test. These are delicious, crunchy, and taste like pickles, thanks to the pickling spice. At this point, they're ready to go into the refrigerator to slow down the fermentation process and to enjoy. So, how easy is that? I hope you try fermenting any vegetables you might have on hand, cauliflower, carrots, whatever you like. It's a great way to preserve the goodness of your harvest just as people have been doing for thousands of years. Thanks for watching this video and if you enjoy it, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. Bye!